Hey everybody, welcome back to Homesteading Off the Grid. Tell them hi, Cleopatra. All right, yeah, I'm your territory. She's marking me with her scent glands. All right, I'm nobody else's, I'm yours. Okay, guys, this is one of the creepiest Halloween stories ever because it's true. It didn't happen on Halloween, but it did happen. So what makes it a Halloween story? The fact that it happened to Stephen King and he is the king of all things creepy. That's one reason it's a Halloween story. Another reason it's a Halloween story is because as of this recording, we're only one week away from Halloween. And um, so here we go. I want to give a special shout out to Carol Williamson. She's one of our subscribers. And it was one of her comments today uh, in a video of ours about visiting a book fair and buying some books that kind of inspired me to get back out here in these creepy old woods just before dark, not after dark, and tell another ghost story. I started telling some ghost stories here in October, all in the spirit of Halloween, and I've, I've, I've been away from it for about 10 days or a week. And I wanted to get back to it because Carol mentioned in her comments that Stephen King is her favorite writer and that he has been for decades. And Stephen King's my favorite writer. And uh, she mentioned... Uh, that uh, Carol said that she thinks his writing changed drastically after his near-fatal accident in 1999. Now, this creepy story involves Stephen King, that accident, and the guy that hit him with a, with a car. Uh, and it is entirely true. And if you don't believe me, I mean, you, you're on YouTube watching this video. As soon as it's over, do a search in the Google search bar for Stephen King, accident, uh, died. And you'll see that this is true. You'll hear Stephen King tell it himself, and he can tell it, of course, much better than I can. He can write better than me, tell stories better than me, probably put his shoes and socks on better than me. Oh, my cat. I'm getting in creepy mode, and she's down there making all these noises. It's starting to creep me out. So back in 1999, and all Stephen King fans know this, but a lot of people who aren't, aren't devout Stephen King fans might not know this. Um, Stephen King was out for a walk. Uh, I believe this happened up in Maine. He's got a home in Maine, and then he's got a place in Florida where he spends the winters. I think this happened when he, up in Maine. He was taking a walk. He, he took daily walks in those days, uh, and he got hit by a car, came flying around the turn, off the road. Daggone near killed him, shattered his hip, broke a bunch of bones, put him in the hospital for a very long time. Mr. King had a very long, painful recovery. He couldn't walk for, I think it was a year. Um, it, it was, I, I watched him talk about it in a video uh, during an interview, and it's been several years since I saw that interview. But, and again, he's the world's best storyteller, and he tells the story so well that I could feel pain just listening to him tell the story. Now, the guy that hit him, I think his name was Brian Smith. Um, uh, the guy shouldn't have been driving. And this is just is not my opinion. And this, I'm not saying this because I'm a Stephen King fan. I'm saying this because this is facts. Between, I think it, there was like a 10-year period or 9-year period from like 1989 to 1998. And this accident happened in 1999. But like in the 10 years before this, the guy that hit Stephen King had gotten 11 citations for either DUI, drinking under the influence, and or speeding. I mean, the guy was just, shouldn't have been driving. And in the year before he hit Stephen King, in 1998, this guy had his driver's license revoked and then resubmitted re or reinstalled, whatever the proper term is, three times in the year before he hit Stephen King. So the fact that this guy was even behind the wheel of a vehicle was a great, uh, Unjustice, disservice to justice. I mean, guys, I mean, I don't know. That's like this guy's out there on the road eventually just going to kill somebody. Why do they keep giving him his license back after all these DUIs and after all these speeding offenses, all this? But whatever, it happened. So King's walking down the road. Guy hits him. I think the story is that the guy had his, his dogs in his van with him and the dog was hungry, and so he bent over to reach into a cooler that he had in the shotgun seat or the floorboards or something, or maybe in the back seat. I, I can't remember the specifics. But he went into this cooler to grab a piece of meat to give this dog so the dog would shut up. And while he's bending over grabbing the meat, he swerves and he rams right into Stephen King. Number one best-selling author of all time, the king of horror, uh, the guy who probably most of us would not want to tick off ever. I mean... He's not physically intimidating, but man, this guy, the stuff he's written, 
Uh, I think he's got close to 70 novels. I've not read them all, but I've read I've read probably more than 40 of them. I, I, I do plan on reading them all. Sometimes he writes them and publishes them quicker than I can keep up with reading the last ones. And I heard his son say, one of his sons say that in an interview too. So I'm not alone. Um, I'm in pretty good company. His sons are good writers. Uh, um, I read the one book, uh, Nosferatu, NOS 482, about the vampires. Uh, it's been a couple years, but but that was a good book. That was written by one of his sons. And his wife, Tabitha, is a really good writer, too. I read one of her novels. Um, but here's the point. So Stephen King's in the hospital, goes through this painful recovery, takes him almost a year to be able to walk again, maybe longer than a year. So the guy that hit him, the following year, in the year 2000, the guy is found dead in bed. His brother goes into his, his home, and the guy is dead in his bed. The guy is 43 years old. He had no long-term illness. He was not in, I mean, aside from, I mean, I don't want to take his inventory, but it sounds like the guy definitely had a problem with drugs and alcohol. So aside from the disease of addiction, uh, he, I mean, no cancer, nothing like that. But he's dead. He's, he's dead. Mysteriously, no foul play. And to make this the creepiest story you've probably ever heard is the fact that he died on Stephen King's birthday. So this guy runs over and nearly kills the master of horror, the king of creepiness, and the following year on the king of creepiness's birthday dies. The uh, autopsy was inconclusive. They was it was very difficult for them to find the cause of death. I believe it was later ruled that he died from a drug overdose. Now, whether that was intentional, as in suicide, or whether that was just accidental drug overdose, who knows? But uh, if you look in the center of your screen, I don't know if this is me or not, but it looks like the forest form a trail. And off to my right of the center of that trail, it looks like a dark figure just showed up. Maybe that's been there. I'm going to have to rewind this and watch it after I'm finished. But this is what I'm talking about, creeping myself out. And my cat's down there staring at it. Can you see her? She looks like she's ready to pounce. She's on that log. She's staring at it. It's still there. It's got to be a tree trunk. I'm just out here creeping myself out. So anyway, Carol Williamson, thank you for watching our videos. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. Thank you, everybody who subscribes to our channels and watches our videos. But the story I just told you is absolutely true. You can Google it. You can look for the Stephen King interview on YouTube yourself. Here we are a week before Halloween. What a great time to tell that story. I think that's about the creepiest Halloween story that could ever be told because it's actually true. So... Thanks for being with me here for another creepy Halloween uh, fashion story. And hopefully in the course of the next week, before our day gets here, I'll get out here and tell you some more. Maybe I'll even be brave enough to do it one of these times once it's fully dark out here. So see you for more next time from here at Homesteading Off the Grid.